Hi everybody, how you all doing? Thought I'd jump on. Um, for me, it's Financial Friday. So I'm starting what I'm calling a new series. My dressing gown, dressing down. And the reason why it's called that is because I mooch about in my dressing gown before I go out and do the job that I do um, in the morning. So um, here I am. So forgive me if there is a bit of background noise. Somebody has just started to um, start drilling as I've now hit the live slash record a button. Um, so why am I here? I wanted to actually discuss um, why we are still struggling in these times and building somebody else's dreams, um, building their goals, building their houses sending their children to private school, you know, giving their business the best of our time and sometimes the best of who we are. So my question is, I've made some notes because I like to make notes, is why do we actually work a nine till five? That's eight hours a day. Um, a lot of the time we have had to travel sometimes up to an hour, hour and a half, two hours, depending on who you are, where you work, and if you have to travel. During these times, we, um, a lot of us are working from home, for those of us who can um, afford to work from home or who or whose employer has given them the facilities and the equipment and what it is they need to work from home, whether that be a laptop, whether that be um, stable broadband, Wi-Fi, um, an additional phone, so, yes, Grand Risings to those of you who joined me this morning. Thank you. Um, so that then changes from eight hours to 10 hours, basically. You then have to try and fit in sleep somewhere into this day, six to eight hours, which is kind of average if we're lucky. So when you look at it, you're only left with one third of each day for yourself. And within that, you have to wash dress, cook, potentially do shopping, look after the family, entertain partners and children, uh, meditate, read, self-development, potentially even exercise, go and visit friends and family. All of that you have to try and cram in to a very small amount of time each week. Now, I've been on a journey for quite some time as to how I'm coming out of employment full stop, giving my time to somebody else in order to accrue an income so I can provide for myself. However, I'm transitioning is what it is that I'd want to say. Um, I'm moving from full-time employment to self-sufficiency, developing my own businesses, being a bit of an entrepreneur, taking some risks. Sometimes without risks, there are no rewards. And I just really want to say that what are we willing to sacrifice? Because I'm actually tired of it being a struggle, perhaps, you know, and that's, that's what it is that I want to say. I don't want to struggle anymore. Um, I'm okay knowing what it is that I'm sacrificing and the reasons why. And I just want to say, but, um, you know, was we really built for the things that it is that we do? Now, I know that I wasn't built for some of the stuff that I've actually done in regards to employment. And that is um, sitting at a desk for hours, staring at a screen, for example, tapping away, um, being in a call centre, listening to hundreds and hundreds of calls of complaints or bank transfers, listening to people talk money. Um, again, sitting in banks where I've worked in um, that sort of environment. Picking sandwiches um, where I hurt my back, for example. Um, driving, doing delivery jobs, um, being security, risking my life, working in care industry, also lifting, lugging people about. Again, putting my body under extraordinary extra strain is what it is I want to say. For no real reason, for no real reason at all, apart from an income. So I need to actually look at what I'm doing with my body going forward because I can't keep up the pace. And I'm not sure if any of you feel like me, but there's wear and tear. I feel like I'm a bit of a car. I'm an older car that takes um, leaded fuel. And um, I now need to um, upgrade my engine per se to then take unleaded. So I perform maybe more efficiently and for a longer period of time. 
And that's how I think of myself at the moment. My body needs a real big MOT and I don't want to continue, keep pushing myself or doing things for others that um, are not really bringing me joy or that are filling my purpose. Now, there are some people who are lucky enough to have found employment or a career, should I say, that does fill their purpose. I would say like teachers, doctors, people who work in the um, services, like, you know, maybe ambulance, um, the police force, people who maybe go into the army, navy, like I said, the services, that sort of thing. You know, dentists, things where you have to maybe study for an extensive length of time and give yourself commitment and dedicate to learn that, that craft, to learn that skill, to develop that, to become a surgeon, you know, a midwife, those sorts of things, things that are around perhaps more so the healing of the body and maintenance of the body and then the maintenance of the mind, you know. Like I said, things that I feel like you kind of um, have to learn. I also feel like the crafts and the trades are areas that we should still look into, plumbing, carpentry, electrical engineering, electronics, architecture, um, learning how to erect and construct buildings, even when it comes to planning, reading blueprints, um, going a step beyond if necessary, um, learning farming, um, learning how to look after animals, being a vet, you know, these sorts of things. And I think that that's the way forward um, in regards to like the career. And um, if you're that way inclined, that that's what I think that you should kind of do with your time. And just as before I sort of come to an end, like I said, I like to make notes. And I really want to just ask this question. How can I tell my body to only be sick five times a year or for five days when it comes to work? I can't plan ahead. Um, sometimes you feel something coming on, but you don't know if it's going to hinder you or if it's contagious. So you kind of battle through and you push on. And then when you do need to take time off, you actually feel quite pressured to get better or recover quickly so you can go back to your job. And sometimes employers are not always um, understanding of what ailments you have, may have, or what illnesses you may be suffering with. Something is um, like depression, which is a very complicated subject, a very complicated um, and unique feeling, I would say, to each individual. Sometimes employers just don't even get why you're down, why you're upset. They don't get bereavement. Um, they don't understand maybe the loss of a child in, you know, in the way to a miscarriage or perhaps something's happened to your child um, where they're out and about in regards to gang violence or I wouldn't just say gang violence, but just the unfortunate of being you know, in the wrong place at the wrong time and an argument escalates basically. So now that we've given, you know, <laughs> nearly 340 odd days, <clears throat> excuse me, of the year to our employer, because um, we only get like 23, 25, 28 days holiday max, depending on where you work and who you work for, you might get maybe 30 days with length of service and that sort of thing. But it's not like you can take them all at the same time. You have to break them down. So it's not like you can, you know, take a whole month off. Some places may offer a secondment or, you know, things like that. But these things are really few and far between. Flexi time, for example, um, is not something that I hear employers talking about, even with people working at home at the moment. You know, my employers never phoned me and kind of gone, you know, you've done 39 and a half hours this week. You've worked hard. You've done what it is you need to do. Everything's up to date. So why don't you go home early and have this half an hour on us? But they're quite happy for you to stay an extra 15 minutes or extra half an hour for what do they call that extra pay? No, they're not actually giving you extra pay. You're working for that, that money. You're working for that money extra that they're giving you. You're working extra time for that little bit of extra money. They're not paying you time and a half or double time, are you? That's extra pay. Where's that gone? Where has that gone? And then what I really want to sort of close with for the last few minutes is it's your personal responsibility. So just listen to that. It's your personal responsibility, okay, to be able to respond personally for yourself. That is what it is we're trying to achieve. Be accountable, be responsible, and then be able to listen to those messages within yourself. Okay, right. And 
just my very, very final point. I wanted to keep this live nice and brief. A little bit of financial advice, something that I actually heard this morning, and I'm glad that I've captured it when I did. If you see something that you want to buy and you can afford to buy it, let's say it's a pair of trainers and they cost a hundred pounds or a hundred dollars. If you only have a hundred dollars, you can't afford to buy those trainers because once you've spent it, there's nothing left. So you should have three times as much money available in your pocket, not on credit, in your bank account, on your card, before you purchase one item. So therefore have £300 or $300 before you spend £100 on trainers or an item of clothing or whatever it is. Because then therefore you've got 200 left to actually enable you to maybe make that £100 back, but you're not left broke. You're not left broke down, empty pocket. You understand where you can't even now go and put electric on the key meter or gas. And then you want to be living on beans and toast and cheese for the, you know what I mean, for the month. Yeah, I've been there, done that. So that's where I'm at. That is really what it is. I wanted to sort of start having a little chat with you all occasionally. And like I said, it's the dressing, the dressing gown, dressing gown, dressing down. Um, I can't even say it right. And um, yeah, the background may improve, but I've just kind of rejigged my environment. And I'm going to upload my room transformation in a couple of days time. Just do a little bit of editing and make it look maybe a bit, bit zhuzhy or something, to be quite honest with you. So you'll see a little bit of before and then you'll see a little bit of after. And in this particular live slash recording upload, you've seen kind of what my setup is now. So as you can see, I'll get used to that. <laughs> everything's the opposite way around but it is actually really there so this is um a reflective mirror image so you're seeing exactly the setup that's why you can read it but that's who I am I am natural mystic <laughs> and I have a group on Facebook called bouncing back and you can also find me on Twitter you can find me on Instagram and you can also find me on Snapchat and it's all I am natural mystic one love, peace. I hope you found this informative and look forward to a little bit more of my savings, budgeting, investments, and um, how I will be carrying myself financially, educationally forward for this year. 2020 winning!